we're, uh, I was, had my heart set on going to Wilson, and I'm like already pumped up to go because we've just been seeing those crazy breaks out there. And then I prayed, and then I had a vision of Platt, Wisconsin, and a, a wedding cake. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, okay, I guess we're going to Platt. So uh, we, we rolled down there, and it, it was really cool because um, the first couple guys we talked to, me and Chris, both got visions of like military stuff. And I'm, so like God started revealing that they're, ah, uh, better mic, awesome. All right, but God started revealing that they were in the like military, something to do with military. So I asked them about it, and they were actually just enlisted, and they're about ready to like actually get into the military. So, so we got to pray for them. To, Bless them, God's words over them. Then um, it was like the Holy Spirit started urging me. He was like, "You need to get outside right now." So we rushed to the food courts and rushed out the doors. So we're like, "All right, what's going on?" Then this guy comes up, trying to sell some CDs and stuff, and he starts talking to us. And I get a word about his ankle, and then um, he had an injury in his ankle. So we prayed, and he said he couldn't tell if it was healed or not, but it felt better. So right after that, there's a group of kids right next to him. So I walk up to him, like, hey, does anybody have any pain in their body? And the kid's kind of laughing and they kind of back up. But one guy's like, yeah, I dislocated my shoulder. I'm like, cool, let, let's, could I pray for it? It'll get better. And he's like, I, can you do it quick? How quick can you do it? I, I said, 15 seconds. He said, could you do it in 10? I said, let's see. So I laid hands on him, prayed, and he, like, all of a sudden his reaction, he just started, like, just freaking out. And he started cussing, like, what the? What the? You know? Uh, Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name. Shoulder go back in place right, right now. now. Right now. Every bit of pain get out. I thank you for your amazing love, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the shoulder being completely healed. I thank you for the swelling to go down. Right now, Father. Right shoulder right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. What the? <laughs> what the? What the? That's the Lord, man. Yeah. He's tripping out, and then his buddy's like, "Yeah, I had to pop that back in place last night." He, his buddy was tripping, so he ended up leaving. And then his buddy was there. We prayed over him, got words over that guy's girlfriend, and then uh, he had a messed up wrist. So we prayed, and all the pain left his wrist. In the middle. Like me filming his testimony, Damon and Chris jump on this guy who's walking like this with a cane, and he had no cartilage in his knees. So, so they prayed, and by the time I got done filming, this guy is like walking without his cane, praising the Lord, just like freaked out. Thank you. Jesus. What just happened, man? I came here in pain. Two nights, nice gentlemen prayed for me. God took all my pain away. I'm actually able to walk without my cane now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, man. Praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. We see this guy go from walking like this to jumping in the back of a truck like nothing. Ah, oh, that's Jesus. He's amazing. Chelsea starts ministering to that one girl, and like we start talking to her some more because she was just going through a rough time. And then uh uh, Chris and Dave start talking to that John guy, and then we prayed for his knees, and his uh, ligaments got healed, and then right after that, this lady starts walking by, and she's like that, and I'm like, what, what happened, you know, can she go, oh, I have an abscess on my foot, I'm like, can we pray for her, she's like, I pray all the time, and just kept walking, I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second, I'm like, we just saw this, and this, and this just happened, let's pray, she's like, alright, fine, you can pray, but don't film it, so we prayed, and then she starts walking, like, with a bad limp, and then it gets better, it gets better, it gets better, and then she's all, oh, and she sits down real quick, takes off her shoe, and just like, so this time we're like, what just happened? We run up to her, we're like, what happened, what happened? She's all, but that, that abscess was like this big, but now it's like this little bump, it's gone. <laughs> After that, there's this little kid who was like eight years old sitting by a six year old brother. And I'm guessing their ages, but they're sitting by the bench. And I walk up and I'm like, hey, can I, can I pray for you guys to bless you? And the kid's like, I don't believe in God. Oh, man, that's sad. Eight years old, he's like, I don't believe in God. God took my, he said, my dad just passed away. He was a uh, Marine or whatever, and he was overseas and he lost his life serving our country. So he had this thing against God, you know, and 
I lost a good friend like recently, so I was able to like connect with them there, and I was like, hey, you know, I don't really get. I don't really get that, and I can't really give you an explanation for that, but I do know God's real and He loves you, and then we, we, um, He let us pray for Him, and He felt God's presence, and then I, I asked him if he had any pain in his body, and he said that his, uh, he just got shot, so all his muscles in his arm were all swollen. So, so we had his six-year-old brother pray over him. Wow. He's all, no way, what, what? <laughs> He freaks out. His, his arm gets healed, and then he ended up uh, accepting the Lord in his heart. We, we saw just a bunch of other people get healed that day, just like going through the mall. Like guys' wrists got healed, and got just crazy prophetic words over this uh, Hispanic couple. And the guy was telling his girlfriend, "I told you that stuff was real." <laughs> So that was just all one day, and that stretch outside, that was within, what, 30 minutes? Yeah. Like, it was just back to back, it was like God set it up. God was having fun. Yeah! And God was saying, go get my bride. Oh, he's, yeah. he, that's what he's saying, he wants his bride. He's just looking for someone who says, I want to go. Yeah. Now who knows, the kingdom of God, we've been given the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. It's an unshakable kingdom, right? You cannot shake it. It says in... Uh, Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Did you hear that? The kingdom cannot be shaken. So if things are going on and you're getting shaken, you're not standing on the kingdom. See, we, we've been given this kingdom and, and it's unshakable, it's unmovable, like, and it's, it's ours. See, I'm going to explain about the kingdom of God because a lot of people, they understand the, the gospel of, I said this prayer, so I'm going to get to heaven, but they don't understand the kingdom and how the kingdom manifests and just God's intention behind his kingdom. So that's what I, I hope to bring about. I hope to encourage you all. And if you turn to Matthew 16, 18, yes. just to warn everybody, I use a lot of scripture. But it says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, which the rock is the confession that you are the Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Think about that. So whenever the devil's attacking, we can just stand there, we can sit, and we can defend ourselves, and the devil's not going to prevail. That's not what that says. Who attacks with their gates? I mean, really think about what that says. It says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Yeah. Gates are a defensive structure. So that means that we're on, on the offensive. Our sword not to storm the gates of hell to plunder its goods. Woo! See, if, if we're stuck on the defensive, then that means we're trying to defend something and we lose our influ influence. We lose our ground when God's all about taking more territory for the kingdom. Yeah. You see, God, God empowers us. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 10.3, the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds and, and any high thing that exalts itself above God. So, so if the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God to just dominate everything, we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and, and the church is supposed to... The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. That means when we storm the gates of hell, something's supposed to happen. We're supposed to take ground. Yeah. Yes. Like, I realize one thing God's been showing me, when we get into defending the ground that we've taken and defending what we have, we actually start losing it. Yeah. But when we're focusing on expanding the kingdom, we gain more, we gain more, we gain more, we build momentum. See, we have Jesus. Like, we literally have Jesus living inside us. But, and He's been given a name above every other name. Like, all those people that got healed, that in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Now, when I was uh, 16 years old, I, I didn't really know the Lord. I was in witchcraft, crystal meth addict, and I was just uh, living in a trailer, just a sinful lifestyle with this girl. And she was, we we're both practicing witchcraft. And one day, I was just coming off just a long binge, and I look over at her, and I see this weird dark shadow come over her eyes, like her eyes turn gray. 
And I just felt this darkness about it. I'm like, what is going on? You know, and then she just kind of gives me a weird smile and goes in the back room and locks the door. I'm spun out of my door. And, uh, I wasn't thinking right, but I just kicked the door. I'm like, what's going on? You know, I can't. She's sitting there with a knife to her wrist, like song to her wrist, trying to kill herself. And then I, I don't know what to do. And then she tries stabbing me. So I get the knife out of her hand and get her belly face down on, on the bed, like holding her down. And her back literally contorts backwards and she's almost throwing me off. She starts screaming at me, saying your is gonna die with three voices coming out of her mouth at once. Yeah. Wow. This is my first real experience with, with this stuff, you know? And I didn't know what to do, and I was like, man, this is crazy. And then out of nowhere, I hear this like whisper, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. So I'm like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and then immediately it left. Yes. Like, like there wasn't even a fight. It was like, boom, it's gone. But that was, that was God showing me his name's above any other name. And his, his, his kingdom. That's his kingdom. I wasn't even a believer. See, that was God just saying, look, you're playing with witchcraft, but I'm greater. I'm so much better. See, it says in Luke eleven twenty, If I cast out demons by the finger of God, surely thou, what? Anybody know the verse? Kingdom has come upon you. So... Y'all need to know your Bibles. <laughs> so, you see, that passage is really important because you see that the casting out demons or the taking out Satan's kingdom is manifesting the kingdom of God. When God's kingdom comes in the picture, the, the darkness has to flee. Like, whatever is not of God has to leave. It, it's... The kingdom of darkness gets thrown down whenever this kingdom is manifest. That's why he said, if I'm casting out demons by the finger of God, surely the kingdom has come upon you. So what is this kingdom? Um, it's, well, first it points to a king. You have to have a king of a kingdom. Or else it's not a king. It'd be a democracy. God doesn't play that way, no? <laughs> it, it's his word or out. <laughs> But, so, a kingdom is the realm of the king's domain. So basically, it's the heavenly realm. It's the realm that God has dominion over, that Jesus is king over, and he's reigning over. Yes. It's the heavenly realm that actually lives inside us. Yes. The Holy Spirit brings it up. Amen. See, in Romans 14, 17. Let me turn to says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. There's another clue to the kingdom of God. We know that it just cast out demons. When the kingdom manifests, it cast out demons. But here's another side. We get to enjoy righteousness because he made us righteous. Peace because the peace of God surpasses all understanding and joy in the Holy Spirit. So as we're enjoying kicking it with the Holy Spirit... God does all the work and he just dominates everything else that contradicts. That's a huge part of the kingdom. Now turn to Matthew 6, 10. This is the Lord's Prayer. Everybody knows this. I hope. <laughs> but it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's just amazing that we were singing that worship too. Because that shows so much about the kingdom. Number one, it shows that God's, God's will is not always done on earth. Or else we wouldn't be praying for His will to be done. It said, and it also points to His kingdom coming, being a part of His will being done on earth as it is in heaven. See, in the heavenly realm, His will is always done. It's always established. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no... There's no poverty in heaven. There's no injustice in heaven. So when we come across these things on earth, to pray for the kingdom to come be on earth as it is in heaven, that means sickness has got to go. Yes. Poverty's got to be dealt with. Yes. It's gotta, yes. That means injustices have to be taken care of. Yes. 
See, that, that's manifesting the kingdom. It, it's manifesting his will, his heart, and, and manifesting the heavenly realm on earth as it is in heaven. See, turn to 1 John 3, 8. It says, He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this is the purpose of the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, Jesus, his purpose of being manifested was completely destroy the works of the devil. Yes. Completely take out the kingdom of darkness. He did that. He modeled what that looks like his whole entire life and he completed it on the cross. I said it is finished. That's amazing. Because in John 19.21 he passed it on to us. Yeah, I know my Bible's not as fast as your cell phones, but. <laughs> John 19, 21, Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. So just as the Father sent Jesus to destroy the works of the devil, to manifest the kingdom, to, to show this world that there's a greater kingdom, there's something greater that's dominant, that overthrows the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. See, it says in Acts 10.38 that Jesus healed all who were oppressed by the devil. So that right there is a picture of what it looks like to manifest the kingdom. And look, it shows you healing also is a part of destroying the works of the devil because sickness and all that stuff came in through the fall. Right. And it's warfare. Yeah. There's contending. There's battle in it, you know? It's not always game. Yeah, you're going to see casualty, but the thing is, we're fighting. We're, we're in battle. We're manifesting the kingdom. Yes. Right. See, that passage I read in 1 John it says, He who sins is of the devil. So a sinner, his identity is, in, is a work of the devil yeah. because that's his identity. He's a sinner, right? Yeah. Well, to really understand the ministry that God gave us, that we're blessed to be a part of. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 14, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus. If one died for all, then all died. If he died for all, then those who live should no longer live for themselves, but him who died and rose again. So that means that Jesus died for everyone. The whole world sins. So that means that all are dead without him. It doesn't matter. That's why the next verse says, Therefore from now on we, we regard no one according to the flesh. Remember it says, He who sins is of the devil. We no longer regard people as of the devil. We, we see them as God sees them. We see them because they're dead without Christ. It doesn't matter if they're the flaming homosexual who's proud of their lifestyle or the quiet librarian who's just an atheist who really smart. It, it doesn't matter. They're just as condemned without Christ. So if Jesus died for them all, that means they're all dead without Him. You know, it says in Colossians 3.3, 3, our lives are hidden in Christ. So that means they don't even know who they are. We're not to regard them by the identity the devil gave them. Because that's not who God created them to be. So that means we're not supposed to regard them according to the flesh. Since even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. So it doesn't matter what they've done, what they've been, or the degree of sin they're in. Once they're in Christ, all that is a blank page. It's gone. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Hear that? We have this ministry. That is, 
that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and not imputing their trespasses against them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So when we see a non-believer or someone in the world, our job is to not hold their sin against them, not regard them according to who they are in the flesh, but love them into the kingdom. That's why Paul was compelled by love, because he knew God's heart for them, and he loved them, and he saw them like Jesus sees them. You know, that's the heart we need to have. That's the ministry we've been given. See, God is in us. Christ is in us, reconciling the world back to the Father because it's fallen. See, that's manifesting the kingdom. That's what it looks like. That's our ministry. That's what he gave us, and that's destroying the works of the devil. True spiritual warfare is not allowing the devil to make a person your enemy, but loving the person regardless. Doesn't matter. It says, now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For if he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's really funny because I see a lot of people crack down on the morality issues. And, and they want to like try to win people through cracking down their morality. But that doesn't matter because they don't know Christ. And even if they dress their old man up, he's still not going to be like Christ. And he's not going to be like Jesus. But once you know Jesus, Jesus makes you like him. He gives you his ministry. He says, hey. So it's all about relationship. And it doesn't matter the degree of sin. Once they're touched by God, it's over. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's a fighter. He fights for every bit of them. He loves them. See, Matthew 10, verse 7. Jesus is talking to the disciples. And he said, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand, meaning you could grab it and show it. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. We have freely received an unshakable kingdom so we can freely give it away. Yes. It's unshakable. Nothing can overcome it. See, oh, that's so amazing. And it's funny because I hear people saying, yeah, but that was the disciples. That's not us. Cool. Gee, you know, that, like God is amazing. He has a backup verse for that. <laughs> if you turn to uh, verse 5. He said, but what? Oh wait, nine, my bad, I wrote it wrong. It said, and heal the sick there, say to them, the kingdom of heaven has come near to you. So preach the kingdom, heal the sick, heal the sick, preach the kingdom, same thing, but here's the thing, he commissioned 70 and not his 12. Oh, yeah. oh snap. <laughs> that means you're all in. Nobody's excluded. <laughs> Can't run from that one. See, the 12 is one thing because they're chilling with Jesus. Of course they're going to do his works. Even Judas did his works. Uh, right? You know, if it was a... Which that's crazy to think about. But anyway, he tells the 70, hey, go out and do this. The 70's not even connected to the 12. They're not bobbing with him everywhere. He, they just said, Jesus, multiply for them. Let's follow him. <laughs> this guy's cool. <laughs> See... 1 Corinthians 4.20 The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter what you could quote. It doesn't matter what you could tell people. Can't you show them? Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I'm learning on the street. Yeah. People have heard the gospel in and out. They've, they've heard it. They know it. Like I can find every atheist. They know, they know the gospel because they're fighting against it. People are in utter rebellion against God. They know the gospel or else, you know. They don't understand it. They don't have a good view of it. They don't know what it means. But they've heard that they're a sinner. This is what they mean by they've heard the gospel. They're a sinner. 
and they need somehow our Jesus so our God won't be mad at them anymore. That's a twist of perspective. They view God as, as mad at them until G Jesus faced, but that's not the thing. God loves them so much and wants to reconcile them to his heart. And he's basically telling them, look, you no longer have to live under the devil's reign anymore. You're, I, that's the gospel. I, you're free from the devil's reign through the blood of Christ. He paid everything. Now, One thing I've noticed is a lot of people have like a lot of fear. See, when it comes to like bringing the kingdom or talking to people or like speaking up, you know? But, and a lot of doctrine in the church is based off fear. Like I was talking about in the beginning, the defense of trying to defend what you have is a fear action. Yeah. See, when I'm, like I heard someone say that the armor in Ephesians is not on your back, it's on the front. So if you're not progressing forward, you're gonna get stabbed in the back. Just that you can't do that, you know? But turn to 2 Timothy 1.7. We have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power, power of love, and of the sound. Can I get an amen? Yeah. A little loud than that, come on. Yeah. See, fear is actually faith in the devil. See, the devil loves fear. Because his whole kingdom operates in fear. Like if you talk to Satan, like real Satanists, they know that. Satan's kingdom operates out of fear. Even the demons operate on fear, you know? But the only one who has a right to be fearful is the devil. See, I believe fear is empathy with the devil. Because the devil knows he's in for it. It's over. There's no chance for him. And he knows how much God loves us and how much God paid a price for us. So, of course, he's the only one who needs to be scared because we got God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 See, we see in Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of fear or a spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. So, when we accept the Lord, when we're reconciled to Him, we become His children. We become His righteousness manifest. We actually become little hymns all over. <laughs> little Jesuses. That's what Christian is, little yeah. Christ. So, oh, man, that's so awesome. But, but it says fear creates bondage. So when, if we're not established in who we are in Christ, we're not established in understanding that we, we be given an unshakable kingdom, that, that Satan is not going to prevail against the church, period. End of story. When, when we have, when we believe and give credit to the devil, it actually creates bondage. It says, the spirit of bond, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So fear creates bondage. That's so important to know because a lot of doctrines based on fear. See, it says in 1 John 4, uh, 4, 17 through 18. I love this passage. And you know how there's those verses that just hit you right in your heart? It's just like, oh, that was amazing. It says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. You hear that? We don't have to worry about judgment. The devil does. The devil needs to fear. We don't. But it says, as he is, so are we in this world. That's such a key to our identity. Like I said, we're little Christ. We're his ambassadors. As he is in heaven, we're representing him here. Right. We're showing this world what Jesus looks like. Right. See, but it says that, that love, in understanding who we are in Christ, it says love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. So we, we are made righteous with God. We have, he's not going to judge us. We're his children, and he's paid everything. And because as he is, so are we in this world. So we understand who we are in him. We understand we're his children, and he's our daddy. Then that completely dominates, and it perfects love in us, because it says God is love. 
So when we understand that God is love, and as He is, so are we in this world, we become the physical manifestation of love here. It says in verse 18, there is no fear in love, because perfect love casts off fear. Because fear involves torment. Ah, the devil's torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So, so this whole fear thing, if you're, if you're in a state of fear about the kingdom or the world or, or, or the devil, what he's doing, and the devil's like a little kid that wants attention. He's all, look at me, look at me, look at me, look what I'm doing over here. So we just focus on Jesus, become like him, and it just crushes everything because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We, we celebrate and walk out our righteousness because he, he gave us righteousness. We don't have to work for it anymore. We have peace because we have a peace that surpasses all understanding through the Holy Spirit. And we have joy. We're supposed to be joyful. And when we just rest in that fact alone, and it just crushes the devil's head. That's right. Come on. But I was talking about fear-based theology. Now, one, one doctrine is the laying on of hands, I've heard a lot. Like, where you got to be careful. You lay hands on them, you're going to get slimed. It reminds me of Ghostbusters, you know, like slime or slimes people. Like, oh no, she has a pentagram, I can't touch her else. You know? But, see, they get that actually off uh, 1 Timothy 5.22. Let me turn there. But this is actually, I've been warned about, like, careful who you lay hands on and this and that. And, like, there's just a lot of garbage. But, like, it's, but it's fear-based because... So it's talking about inaugurating people into leadership. See, and First uh, Timothy four fourteen, it even talks about the the gift that's in you, Timothy, by the laying on of hands. So he's talking about when Timothy was inaugurated and just blessed with a gifting for that role of leadership, eldership. So. We were at Elk Grove Street, like, uh, was it last Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, and it was cool. We were, like, walking around just loving on people, you know, and we came across uh, a bunch of girls, and 
started talking to him. One girl's back was sore, so we prayed for her, and her back felt better. And then this other girl had a nose piercing, I think it was. She said the side of her nose hurt, so she's like, I don't think you can pray for that. I'm like, watch, let's see. So I took her hand, and we prayed, and then she said all the pain left, so she's all shocked, you know? And then her friend has a pentagram around her neck. Ooh, like it gets lined. <laughs> but so I had a friend pray. I'm like, hey, lady, can, 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 you just got healed. Can you pray for your friend? She's like, yeah, someone just say in Jesus' name, ankle be healed. Because she messed up her ankle where she could have bend it a certain way and it was just in a lot of pain. So she prayed and she could bend it all the way around. And this girl was just freaked out. Alright, because your nose feels better. Here, stick your hand on her ankle. What's your name, Walter? Just say in Jesus' name. Ankle be healed. Ankle be healed. All pain go? Move the right way. In Jesus' name. Second move. Oh my gosh, I can actually bend it the full way. <laughs> this morning I bent it and it really hurt, and I was like, oh, it's not healed, but now it's. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> See, God didn't go like, oh no, you have that pentagram around your neck. Same thing with that kid cussing, you know, when his shoulder got healed. He's like, what the? God's like, oh, you just, you just cussed, I'm taking it back. <laughs> Shame on you. I show up, I heal you, and you start cussing. That's irreverent. <laughs> See, God is so awesome because He doesn't regard us according to the flesh, He regards us according to who we are. My whole life, until I came to the Lord, was just chaos and just running, and I knew God was after me. He never turned away from me. He never said, Oh, you got too dirty. I'm, you, no, he was always there like, are you done yet? Okay, you're going a little deeper. Are you done yet? Okay, you're going a little deeper. This is going to take a long time to undo, but are you done yet? See, so laying on of hands, it says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world in 1 John 4. 4. If we really believe that, we're not scared of laying on of hands. See, Jesus didn't freak out about laying on of hands when he came across that, that demonized guy with like a thousand demons, legions all coming up. And Jesus was like, wait, wait, I'm trying to cast you up. Don't come near me. <laughs> See, when that lady that was bleeding touched Jesus, she became clean. Why? Because you touch Jesus, you become clean, period. If we're filled with Jesus, you can't touch us without some happening to you. That's right. Kid. Another thing, I'm going to get into the falling away of the church. That's another big fear-based doctrine where everyone thinks that, or not everyone, but a big chunk of the church actually believes that the filing and powerless state of the church means that Jesus is coming back soon. So they actually rejoice that the church is failing. But remember that passage I read where the gates of Hades can't prevail against the church? That right there contradicts that whole doctrine right there. That verse alone... Because that, uh, that the whole theology is twisted. But anyway, I'm just going to go straight to Revelation 19.7. It's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh yes, we're all going to be chilling there. But it's verse 7, 19.7. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come and His wife has made herself ready. Yeah. I don't know. I, I love my wife, but when we got married, I'd be pretty mad if she just like went off with the bar or some bunch of dudes and this and that, you know, and just got trashed. And then that's not what you do on your wedding day. You prepare yourself, right? Yeah. We are the bride. We're being prepared for him to come. Right. You know, so, I don't know. The bride's usually really pretty beautiful when Jesus, I mean, when the, the, she's ready to meet the groom, right? Yeah. She dresses herself up. She gets all pretty. Amen. 
That's the way the church should be. That's the way we should view it. We're growing into the fullness of Christ. It shows that in Ephesians. We're actually growing, and we're becoming more and more like Him, and we're becoming more and more in His power, and it's not separate from Him. It's as we walk in the oneness with Him, as the revelation of who we are in Him, we, we see Him manifest, His kingdom come, increase. And He's, he's coming back for a glorious bride. It says, I'm going to turn to Ephesians. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing water by the, Lord, by the word, that he might present to her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but she should be holy and without blemish. So Jesus is making the church holy and without blemish, but having a doctrine that says the more unholy we are and the more blemished we are, the closer we are to our wedding day. That's kind of twisted, right? I, I prefer just the, the positive Jesus shows up and the devil has to flee thing, you know? Yeah. See, who knows the devil's already been judged? He's not sitting there waiting to be judged. He, he literally is judged. And we have the Holy Spirit. Remember the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom. Well, let's turn to John 16, 8. It says, And when he is come, referring to the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Now first, remember I was saying not regarding anyone according to the flesh. It's not your job to tell them they're sturdy around sin. It's the Holy Spirit's job. He shows them. It says he convicts of sin. Yes. I, I don't know if, if, if someone has a God syndrome where they think it's their job to convict and stop. That's his job. You're not God. Lay off. <laughs> he made it simple. Our job is just to love people. Yeah. He convicts the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father. See, the Holy Spirit makes us righteous. He gives us righteousness as a gift. And because I go to my Father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. Not will be, has been. Yeah. See, Jesus shows up. He's cast out demons by the finger of God and manifesting, showing this kingdom that is far superior. It's at hand. We no longer have to live by the devil's rules anymore. See, it says when this Holy Spirit has come, the devil's judged. We have the Holy Spirit. That means everything's go. It's not about, oh, should I pray for this guy? He's sick, but I don't know if he deserves No. The devil's been judged. If it's the devil's work, you're called to destroy it. That's, right. That's the gospel. Yeah. Woo. So. See, Revelation chapter 12. Podio used a lot of scripture. Okay. It says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And then, being with child, she cried out in labor and pain and gave birth. That woman's Israel and the twelve stars represent the tribes of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. The giving birth represents the Messiah that they've been waiting for. Yeah. See, another sign appeared in heaven. A great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. He threw his, his a third of the stars of heaven and threw them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman and was ready, who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it, it was born. See, the, in this passage... The child's a capital C, so that means Jesus. She bore the male child who was to rule the nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. And the woman fled in the wilderness where she was given a place prepared by God. There they should feed her 1,260 days. So basically, the woman Israel 
bears the Messiah. The Messiah gets caught up to heaven. The devil tries to destroy it. Remember Herod tried taking out Jesus as a baby? The devil wanted to destroy Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is going to rule the nations with rod and iron. He's going to come to rule. He's going to come to reign as king. Well, what happened when Jesus got to heaven? This child gets to heaven. It says, and a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, and they did not prevail. That's right. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. A lot of people believe that Satan's still up in heaven telling God about, you know. No, it says in heaven, Satan's not there no more. He's cast down. He's thrown down. It says, so the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil Satan, who deceives the whole world. And he was cast to the earth as he cast with them. He doubles the accuser brethren. Yes. See, going back to the holding sin against people, the devil's the accuser brethren. We should never act like him. Right. Wow. But apart from that, the devil, the, it's not like Job where the devil rolls up and says, hey, what's up, God? God's like, hey, you see my servant Job? No. Zechariah chapter 14, you see, the devil standing on the right side or left, or I can't remember, but he's opposing Joshua the priest, you know? And what happens? God takes Joshua and makes him white, like gives him garments and says, no, he's righteous, back off. Yeah. That's what Jesus did when he went to heaven. He threw Satan down. So Satan's no longer accusing us before God. He's accusing God to us. He's saying, look, God's this, God's that. He's thinking that the battle's changed. It's no longer the devil going to God every time. It's yeah. the devil's been judged and he's cast down. Yeah, that's right. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who has accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Satan is no longer accusing. Why? Because we're covered in the blood of Jesus and there's nothing left to accuse us of. Wow. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. See, so we died to the old man. We live in the kingdom. We live on our true identity hidden in Christ. We, we hold on to the testimony of his blood and we overcome the devil every time. Yeah. Yes. See, in Luke chapter 10, verse 18 through 20, it says, and he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, we've been given all authority over the devil, Mary. Why is the devil cast down? Because believers went. They healed the sick. They cast out demons. They raised the dead. The believers went. They did what Jesus said. The commission hasn't changed. He didn't, he didn't, Jesus didn't say, oh, okay, now that that's done, like, let's move on to something else. Now we can sit and play church. Let the world just get darker and darker. Now, I had a vision a long time ago, about four years ago, and it was crazy because the Lord was just giving me a revelation about like the end times, and I saw the world, and half of it, just start glowing this bright white light and the other half turned just really pitch darkness. And like I just knew in my heart it's the wheat and the tares are grown up. We demonstrate what it looks like to be in his fullness. What, what it looks like to be a believer completely sold out. Completely dead to self and completely alive manifest in the kingdom. But you're going to see the fruit of the darkness because when, as we shine it pushes the devil in the corner. And it, it really, it just exposes what's really there. Yeah. It's no longer hidden anymore. It's in the obvious. It's in the yeah. open. Yeah. See, the devil's wickedness isn't growing. It's always been there. It's just we're seeing it more because 
Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. If Jesus has all authority, that means the devil has no authority. Yes, right. That means that simply means we don't have to put up with this crap anymore. <laughs> think, think of like I like the whole New Testament Job idea. Because a New Testament Job would have Jesus, you know, because he wasn't under Jesus. And he was trying to be righteous by his own righteousness. But the whole point of Job was God saying, you're trying to be righteous by your righteousness, but you need to be righteous by my righteousness. Right. Read it. Elihu, the last guy talking. He's the only one who said, I'm talking by the Spirit of God. All the other guys were just guessing. That's what he told them. But... A New Testament Job, what does that look like? In Jesus' name, get away from me. See, oh, God is so amazing. You know? He's given us this kingdom, and if you read, read the Bible, it's all about... War is such a huge part of the Bible, all the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation. We're in a constant war. The Old Testament shows us how to war in the Spirit. If you look, he tells Joshua, go, take the land. He's telling you guys, go, take the land. You have the kingdom manifested. Show this world that this kingdom is coming. Yes. Show this world that there's a greater kingdom and you live on a greater reality, a higher plane. Yeah. That's right. See, that's the kingdom. That's right. See, in Matthew 24, 14, says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So, right, regardless where you stand with tribulation, this, that, this, that, the gospel of the kingdom, that means this kingdom manifested in power, because the kingdom is not a matter of talk, but is a power. Yes. The kingdom of God is not apologetics, it's not how good you can debate, or how quick you can quote scriptures. The kingdom of God is God's literal realm manifesting in this one and colliding with this one. That's right, come on. Just dominating. It's easy on our part. We just gotta love God and love people. He made it easy. Right. He does all the hard work, you know, kind of like where Joshua was battling and then uh, Moses held his hands up and then Joshua would start winning and then Moses put his hands down, Joshua would start losing, you know? It kind of gives us a picture of Christ. We just start praising God. Yeah. Jesus goes up because Joshua is a picture of Christ right. and fights our battles for us. And he That's goes right. and dominates. Right. But it's amazing because we, we have the gospel. We, we have the kingdom living inside us. We have the Holy Spirit. And it's enough to overthrow anything. Like he really is. My wife and I were in Longview just yesterday. And we're at, uh, what was it, Office Depot? Yeah, it was Office Depot, and there's this old guy, he had his arm in a sling, and I'm like, what happened, you know? And, well, I asked him what happened, he said uh, he was chasing after his little chihuahua thing, and he was running, and he tripped, and he fell, and busted his elbow up into his shoulder on the concrete, and he said he had four nurses, and it was really horrible, and I'm like, can I pray for it? And he's like, I'm a Christian too. I go to church. I'm like, that's awesome. Let, let me pray for it, you know? So he let me pray and he said, a lot of the pain went down. So I prayed again and he said, prayed for his shoulder and he said, it, it feels looser. It feels better. I still have tension right here. So we prayed for his elbow like two more times and then he's moving it and then he starts reverting back to telling me how bad it was. Like, no, I fell, and the doctors looked, and they said this and this and this. I'm like, but how's it feeling now? It's like, it feels good. So he takes his stroller and starts walking with his stroller, you know? <laughs> That's manifesting the king. Yeah. See, right after that, 
We we stopped by Fred Meyer and um, still in Longview, and uh, there's this lady. Her foot was in a boot, and I'm like, "Hey, what happened?" She's like, "Oh, a drunk driver hit me and it crushed my foot, and I just had surgery and I had pins." And I'm like, "Well, can I pray for it?" She's like, "Yes, please." <laughs> like shocked that we would ask her to pray. She was like just so happy. It was, it was just cool. So the second we start praying, she started crying. Like God just started hitting her and she was just like overjoyed that she never had someone just stop and love her and pray for her. So we prayed and she said it starts feeling better. Like she said that we prayed again and prayed again. She said it feels 100%. Like she didn't take the boot off. She said she'll check it when she gets home. But she said I don't positive it's 100%. She said, I can step and there's no pain whatsoever. I can, you know? So she, she, we got words over her and I saw that she was an overcomer, that the Lord helped her overcome drug, like a drug addiction and all kinds of rough stuff. And we just started talking. She's like, what church do you go to? We're like, oh, we go in Vancouver, you know? She's like, oh, I want to go to that church. We're like, cool, you know? So, but we, we pointed her to a church in Longview because we used to go to Calvary Chapel there. That was really cool. But, but it's just amazing, and that's what life can be like every day. Like, like it doesn't have to be like we we do missions where we'll go out to the mall specifically to evangelize and just love people, you know. And that will be an all day thing. But if you're at the store, you have an opportunity. So there's just millions of people that the devils completely dominate their life, and they don't know who they are because their lives are really hidden in Christ. And who they think they are is not who they are. So that means you have an opportunity. I can't tell you how many people I've seen healed in Winco's or Walmart's just chopping. <laughs> hey, what happened to your wrist? Oh, tendonitis? Cool. <laughs> not, not cool that you have tendonitis, but watch this. <laughs> but yeah, God, it's amazing. He's given us the kingdom. And if anything you get out of this, what I, what I hope you get out of this is understanding that we're a part of something far greater. We're, we're far, part of something far bigger. We have literally the kingdom of God, the heavenly realm inside us ready to manifest. And we are privileged to carry on in the works and ministry of Jesus Christ. Because we're children. We're made in His image. We're restored back to who we are in Him. And He's given us the kingdom. And he says, now I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 16. There's been a key verse I keep jumping back to, but you have to get this. It's funny when you go all highlighter crazy and then all of a sudden it becomes distracting. <laughs> yeah. but it says in a and I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. If you're on the defensive, if you're hiding, yeah, it's probably going to prevail. But if you're going to the gates and storming it, it's not going to prevail. And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and what you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. A better, a better rendering of that would be, would have been bound in heaven or what would have been loosed in heaven. Because we're manifesting what is in heaven that's not here, we're manifesting it here now. Right. See, so he's given, God's given us the keys of the kingdom. He's given us authority over the devil, and he says, go. Go, carry my kingdom. Show this world that my kingdom is greater. Show this world they no longer have to live under the tyranny of the devil. Right. They no longer have to be oppressed by him. They no longer have to take his garbage. Go, I give you authority to trample on them, to trample on serpents, on scorpions. Go. Go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the... Jesus says this. He says go. That is the gospel, that we have something greater. And we know who we are in Him. See, that right there is what the world needs, and they're dying to find it. So I'm going to close just in prayer. So, God, you're amazing. Praise you and thank you, Lord. Lord, I know you gave me this message, God. This isn't something I came up with. This is you burning in me, God. Yeah. This is my life, God. Yeah. 
So Lord, I pray, God, that everyone here, God, when they leave, God, that you would provide just place, people in their lives to minister to you, God. I don't care if it's in a grocery store line or, or even if there's a funny, awkward place that they just feel uncomfortable talking to people, like a bathroom, that you would send someone to them to talk to them. Lord, I pray that you give them words of wisdom, words of knowledge, just, just, just place a burning passion to love people, God. And it's just as simple as that, to love people and to love you with everything they are, God. I pray, God, that everyone in this room will be radical, sold-out warriors for your kingdom, God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God. I thank you, God, because you made us righteous, God. That we have your peace and your presence, God. And we, we can actually have joy, God. And that just destroys the works of the devil. We just thank you and praise you, God. I pray that we'll, when we leave here tonight, God, that, that everyone here will see people in a new light, to see people, to see them how you see them, to have that longing, God, to call your bride, to bring your bride to you, God. Because you're amazing, and I just praise you. I thank you, God. And your, your kingdom dominates any other kingdom, God. So we just pray your kingdom come and your will be done in all every area of our lives, God. Just thank you, God, that your kingdom will come, Lord, in every area, God. In healing, God. In, in emotional, physical, spiritual, every type of healing, God, that you just completely dominate, God. I just thank you, Lord, in financial, God, in physical, in relationships, God. I just pray healing, God, that your kingdom would manifest in every area of life, whether it's business or what, God. And we just thank you and praise you, God, that You're raising up just radical warriors who know you. <laughs> and just love people and the devil can't stand it. So we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. difference in the hills? Oh, I can see it. Well, it's, yeah. 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 Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Right leg grow right now. Right leg grow right now in Jesus' name. Thank you right now in Jesus' name. Right leg grow right now. Right leg grow right now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Right leg grow out right now. Right leg grow right now in Jesus' name. Is that even? It is. Is that yeah, that's even. Alright, stand stand up, let's see how your hips fit. <laughs> Like, so, so I will say that I still have pain in this knee because I hurt it, but this is the side, but I feel... Here, chill, chill. Oh, Jesus. Check it, how's it feeling? <laughs> I'm just gonna do a dance. <laughs> it's not cracking. It's no not more. cracking? All, all the pain's gone? Yeah, it's not cracking. It's not cracking. Mm -hmm. like, 
It's not cracky. <laughs> it's not cracky. And so what I'm feeling like right now in my hips, like it's almost like 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 I've been working out like right now. So then I don't know if that's because it's aligning the helper or whatever, but it just feels like yeah. So, yeah. Feels good though. Amen. Yeah, seriously. It like feels like <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You get all the glory, of course.